with Gypsy Fay Creations. Thanks so much for tuning in and welcome. It is time, it is the time of the year to make a fall inspired full moon soap. And I am staying pretty on schedule with doing like the spring and the summer and now I'm gonna do fall. Gotta keep up with these moons, you know. So I have here all of my oils left at room temperature, well melted and left at room temperature. There's also some kaolin clay, some coconut milk powder, and into my lye solution is lye, distilled water, tussa silk, and sodium lactate. All really good stuff. And I'm just going, I'm not even really going to blend this up too much. I just want to incorporate the oils and the lye solution together. I'm gonna give it a couple little bursts and keep it very fluid for this design. The first part of this soap is of course to make the moon in beds. So that is what I'm going to do today and then tomorrow I will make the actual soap base that these moons will sit into. So I'm just going to give this a little bit of a buzz and mix it up a little bit more. that's where I want it. It's not at a trace, it's just incorporated into each other. And I'm going to split some of this up for my accent color. I'm choosing reds and an orange for this, and just the accent color. So I don't want too much of this. In this little container is some fire cider mica from Nurture Soap. It is a very pretty burnt orange looking color. I'm also going to be doing a mica drizzle. So in this little container is some of my oil and a little bit of red vibrance mica that is also from Nurture. And into the big container here, we're gonna color it white. So I'm gonna put a little bit of titanium dioxide that's been dispersed in water in there. Squeeze some of that. I'm also going to add some of this Dionysus Tears into it to get a little bit of a shimmer, a little shine going on in the moon. Very, very iridescent, pretty shimmery mica. And then I'm going to be adding some glow in the dark powder. This is a yellow green glow powder from Soapbox Micas. And I don't always get the effect that I want. Oops, I have no idea what just fell there. <laughs> when I add glow powder, it's like hit or miss. So hopefully this turns out to be a very glowy soap. That is what I want. All right, let's mix these colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my fragrance, which I chose a Indian Summer by Nature's Garden. And this smells really good. It has notes of strawberries, green apple, pears, geranium, basil, oak, and fresh greenery, and it's delightful. And I'm just gonna hand mix that in. It does not have any vanillin in it, and it should not discolor. Other than that, I'm not quite sure how, how it's going to behave. We will see, as usual. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix that in, and then I'm gonna do my mica drizzle on here. So. Mix that in. It smells so good. I had to look up what Indian summer was because the picture on the label of the soap is very like fall looking and I know I've heard the term before and I kind of had an idea of what I thought it was and I looked it up and I was correct. So according to Wikipedia, an Indian summer is a period of unseasonably warm dry weather that sometimes occurs in autumn in the northern hemisphere. So anything above the equator that is very sunny and clear with above average temperatures in like September to November. So that is what an Indian summer is. I can't recall if we've had one of those since my lifetime, but I thought that was just not fair because I am all about the autumn weather. <laughs> All right, so I've mixed that in. I'm gonna go ahead and add my mica drizzle and I'm gonna get my PVC pipes over here and we'll start pouring. All right, and these have been lined with parchment paper and I have my little adapters all connected so nothing comes seeping out the bottom and everything gets held into place. 
And I'm just going back and forth to make sure all that color is pretty even distributed in between both of these. I'm going to let these set for 24 hours and I'll come back tomorrow and make the rest of the soap. Alright, back the next day and I have unmolded the moon in beds. Looking a little more like Mars right now, but they came out very nicely. And I, I'm picking up lots of apple out of out of that uh, fragrance oil. The, the apple notes are really coming through. All right, so the next step is to get the sky part going. And I wanted to do the black night sky. I know I've done um, purple, like a dark purple before. But we're gonna go black on this one because when I think of fall, I think of like Halloween and I think of black and oranges. So I've mixed together some of this Marcasite by Soapbox Micas, and that is to give it a little bit of shimmer. I've got some activated charcoal that adds great properties to soap, and it's a natural color. And then I have some matte black oxide, and that is to get that really dark black night sky. It really rounds out the color and just makes it a very solid black. So if you're looking for a true black and not a gray, I highly recommend the matte black. And so I've just mixed that up into some of the oils and I'm going to just put it into my my bucket here now because this is going to be the only color that's going into the soap. Had to go find my little spatula. Only having one means I typically don't have it near me and have to go and hunt to find it. But I'm just going to try and scrape as much of this out as I can. And then I will mix it in and then add the lye solution that also has Tessa Silk, sodium lactate. And then of course my oils have my coconut milk in there and my kaolin clay. The other thing about activated charcoal and black oxides is it makes a mess and it gets everywhere and it is impossible to wipe up. So be careful if you, you drip it anywhere because you will regret it. So I like that color. I think I'm going to keep it just like that. I'm going to add in that same Indian summer fragrance into this and hand mix it in. Pour in a layer into my molds and let that set up before I put my moon embed in there so that it doesn't sink to the bottom. I have to say I love this fragrance and it's probably one that I, I, could, I could imagine using it all year round, not just for fall. It does have a, a very fruity smell to it. Every time I think of Indian Summer, I am reminded of the Brooks and Dunn Indian Summer song. I don't know if that's just me, but I can't say Indian Summer in my head without singing it like Brooks and Dunn, and I'm not going to do that out loud for you guys. <laughs> it is a very nice fragrance though because it seems to slow down Trace and does not accelerate. So it seems like a good fragrance to work with if you're trying to do like intricate designs or if you are a newbie to soap maker. But I'm loving it so far. And the fact that it doesn't discolor, no Vanillin in it, it's always winner in my book. All right, a little thin layer there. Let that set and then we'll put our moon embeds in there.
So next step is get getting clouds on here. I like to add fluffy cloud looking icing to my moon soap. So I have a 1A tip here, it's just a large round tip. And I'm gonna put some dollops all over this and hopefully get some cloud looking frosting before I put my embeds on. And yeah, this is gonna look great. I have some pretty embeds to go on there. I usually put a star on there and of course something to do with either the scent or the um, season that I'm making the soap for. And I've got some pretty leaves and pumpkins, of course, to go on here. It's gonna look great. Hopefully it glows in the dark, because that is what I want. So I am filming this in August, and tomorrow is a big day for me. I'm really anxious, because I went and I did a thing, you guys. I did a thing. <laughs> I shared with you all in February of this year that I quit my job. I had quit my job at working for a dental office for over six years, going on seven. I quit. The um, dentist or my boss had decided he was going to sell his little family um, dental office to a corporate business. and. They just wanted to come in and change everything, and he lost about five employees, me included, and the deal fell through. It just wasn't something that I was interested in being a part of. It just sounded way too much, and I was like, hey, I'll just quit, and I'll, I'll focus on doing my little soap business, or, you know, just taking a break. Maybe I'd find a new job, but I think I wanted to take soaping full time, and I've done that. <clears throat> Well, he recently found a buyer for the company, and it's, it is a corporate business, but they seem a lot more laid back. They're not going to be changing the software, making anyone you wear uniforms, you know, coming in and just changing the place. It seems like they're more hands off. Well, they are down a person, and they needed someone to help. And they asked me if I would entertain the idea of going back. And I have, you guys. It is part-time and possibly temporary. I'm not quite sure what I'm thinking yet. Or the fact that what am I thinking about going back in general. Um, I still will have like the two days to do my own soap stuff. And I see it as an opportunity to save money. Not that I absolutely need to go back, but I see it as, you know, Christmas money or vacation money. And we've been talking for a few new, few years about moving out of this house and buying our own. <laughs> so I said yes. Tomorrow I start my first day at my new old job or old new job. <laughs> and I'm a little anxious because after taking six months off and pretty much talking to a camera and myself and the cats. It's going to be weird having to go back and answer phones and, and deal with insurance companies and doing dentistry stuff. It's going to be very, very weird. Just not only the schedule of like getting up early and packing my lunch, actually having to wear real clothes <laughs> because in the mornings I just throw on whatever I want, whether it matches or not. So that's going to be a very big change for me. But by the time you guys see this video, I would have been there for a month or so. And I'm sure I've gotten used to it. But hey, I am looking forward to the extra money we're going to be receiving. And I'm going to be saving. I think that taking off and not spending as much, pretty much just sewing soap supplies and my car payment and bills. I've learned to not spend all willy-nilly and all over the place, so I'm a little more persnickety about where my money goes, but I'm hoping that helps and that I will be able to save money. Like, I'll, I'll not spend it, I'll just save it, so we will see. I don't know, you guys. I can't believe I'm going back. It's not something I ever imagined I'd be doing. I've pretty much blocked out the seven years that I worked there. I didn't even think once about it. It was just done and over and gone. But it's temporary and it's part time and I think I can handle it. It'll be like riding a bike, right? Get right back on it and know exactly what I'm doing. 
All right, so I'm gonna continue on. Just pipe this, and then I will show you guys the embeds that are gonna go on it. So these are the embeds. These guys look like little mini pumpkins and the stars. And then I did some leaves. This is all melt and pour. And if I have the uh, link to the mold, I'll leave it down below, or to the molds. But this is gonna look really pretty on top. So I'm gonna start by putting on these little mini pumpkins on the top. These are so cute. This is a brand new mold. I've never used this before. My friend Cheryl had bought it and told me about it. And of course I had to be a copycat and I had to go get one for myself. And it is super cute. And it's a little guy. It's a little mold. So it's very affordable. And even though they look like little mini pumpkins, they are not. If you guys have never seen these in real life, they are called pootka pods. And you find them a lot in the autumn. And typically I would have them as decoration in my house. <laughs> but being that my fall decorations aren't really out right now, I can't show you. But they are a fruit. They grow on a tree. And birds usually eat them. I don't think humans can eat them, but I'm not 100% sure about that. So don't quote me. <laughs> and they're like little hollow dried pieces of like, like a seed. It's like a giant seed pretty much is what it feels and looks like. And you can use them in crafts or in your um, potpourri or filling up vases or just spreading them out on a table I always think it looks really pretty there's they're just they bring the feel of autumn to them and I don't even think that's what they were made for they didn't even know all right so I'll just go ahead and put on the rest of these stars and leaves I'll give it a little bit of eco glitter on there spray with the rubbing alcohol I'll let it sit and then I will bring you guys back tomorrow when I cut it which for you is like right now. <laughs> you don't have to wait. It's not fair. <laughs> Alright, let's see what Harvest Moon looks like on the inside. I'm going to cut off a little end piece here so that that end piece is got a pretty design on both sides is what I'm going for. So far I am liking this soap. Let's see. Wow. I love that fire cider color in there. That is gorgeous. What do you guys think? Pretty. Smells really good. I still pick up uh, strong notes of that apple in there, but it is a very fall smelling soap. So that one was a pleasure to work with. That is so pretty. I'm in love with this. Very nice. If I have lined this up correctly, this video should be coming out on September 13th which is a Friday, so Friday the 13th, and it falls in September, so you guys are welcome. I thought I was very clever with planning out this soap, so it is also the day before the full harvest moon. So yeah, it just lines up perfectly with this soap design, and it will be available on September 27th if you guys wanna purchase a bar of it. I did cut up the other loaf, I cheated, <laughs> and I'm not getting any glow out of it. It is hit or miss, so I, did, I didn't get any glow out of it, but if that changes, I will let you guys know. And I, I'm not going to give up on that because I'm going to try some other um, different glow powders. Maybe that one just works better in melt and pour, but it wasn't doing much. I am going to leave a little unboxing or review at the end of this video. I decided to purchase from one of my favorite soap makers for the first time. I've been eyeing up her soaps for a long time and it is Barefoot Gypsy Soap Company. Every now and then I like to splurge and buy soap, you know, like I need it. <clears throat> she makes goat soap, soap from, used goat from the, 
<laughs> goat milk from the goats that she raises and puts that in her soap. So I bought a bar of that and a conditioner bar. I've never tried a conditioner bar before. I have really long hair. I hate brushing it. It's like a pain in the butt because there's always lots of knots in it. I gotta say I'm I'm just amazed how well that conditioner bar works. So if you guys want to try one, I have a good one for you. Go hit uh, Barefoot Gypsy Soap Company up. She makes really pretty stunning bars. All of her work. I've loved all of it. So, And it was really hard to pick one bar. <laughs> but yeah, using a conditioner bar. I was surprised that I used it and the brush went through my hair like butter. That's never happened. I usually have to go through conditioner more than I go through shampoo. <laughs> But here is a close-up look of the Harvest Moon Soap. Again, it will be available on September 27th. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give me a big thumbs up. New to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Any questions or comments, leave me a comment in the comment section down below. And until next time, I hope you guys have a very nice day, and I'll smell you later. All right, this just came in the mail. Let's open it up. I need another bar of soap, like I need a hole in the head. And I know I've said that plenty of times, but I just can't help myself sometimes. Like I wanna support my other soapy friends. And then there are artists like Barefoot Gypsy Creations, or why do I say that? Barefoot Gypsy Soap Company. I'm <laughs> getting it confused with mine that make these outstanding gorgeous bars of soap i mean even her packaging i love it she does such a great job so i've never tried a conditioner bar before and i picked out the raspberry jam one and that's what it looks like it looks like a regular old bar of soap but it's for your hair it smells really good love the little container that it comes in love her label give you guys an up close look you can see all the ingredients that she puts in this her label is adorable and then the bar of soap there are so many to choose from she is truly an artist i tell you what she made these um these soap bars that had fruit shapes inside of them i really don't know if i want to even open this but you know <laughs> You have to use it in soap, right? At least that's what I tell people about mine. And I don't want to butcher it either. But the, she had like a whole bunch of different soaps that were themed around fruit. And I thought for sure I was going to be getting one of those. And then I saw this one. And it's called Firefly. Look at that. That is awesome. Mm, and that smells really good. I just love her work so much. All of her bars are this awesome, honestly. The detail that she puts into it. On top of it. I love it. So guys, go check her out. Go even follow her on Instagram because I just love looking at her Instagram. It's just so pleasing to the eye. I show it off quite often, but I love my two items here. So, thank you Barefoot Gypsy 